Yes, if you're asking, we're super jealous of Chicago Comic Con. <laughs> well, it didn't get dressed up for nothing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. Uh, I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And this is episode 19. 19. 19. 19. It's more fingers than you have. Yeah, hold on. We put some feet. Oh, I'm going to put my feet up. Uh,. Wow, we're getting, we've been doing this a little while. We took a couple yeah. weeks off because of the war and Vegas and stuff, but that'd be 24, that's three months. Yeah? No. No, more than that. Six months. Six, six? No. Four months. I was told there was no math on this show. I went to, back to the whole, <laughs> they put my toes up. Uh, Anyways, we've while. done a lot. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do this week's show. Uh, not a ton of stuff. Not like the Christmas time when there was like nothing, but not a ton of stuff. Uh, but we got a couple things we want to go over. The first thing though is the really big one. Uh, the Rogue One uh, DVD came out. Uh, well, the digital at least the digital version came out. the The physical DVD doesn't come out until the fourth of April, which is next Tuesday. But if you are a true Star Wars fan, you, you have purchased. The di digital download. And you've watched it 17 times. <laughs> We've only watched it once, um, but we had a bunch of stuff do going on this weekend, so we really didn't have a chance to sit down and watch it. So we watched the, uh, the movie on Sunday, and then yesterday we watched an hour and a half of extras. It was awesome. And, uh, so we just wanted to talk about the extras and, you know, cause you know, we've, we've done a big review on Rogue One. We loved it. Yes. Yes. Uh, surprising, huh? Uh, but the extras were... Um, I love uh, when they actually spend time talking about the movie-making process. Uh, one of the best extras I've ever seen was on uh, John Carter. And they spent that whole day following the, the, the main, part, main members of the cast. Everything from when they woke up in the morning to going to makeup oh, and yeah. going to... Uh, craft services and yeah. on set and they went with the director and the a actors and everybody it was really really cool and it was just a whole day and that one thing was like 45 minutes but on rogue one they did um they did one segment it was about 10 15 minutes of about how we got uh how john knoll uh got the idea of of rogue one which was very cool. Which was a really cool kind of story and how he's always kind of had it and how he went to Kathleen Kennedy, which is really cool. And then uh, they did one on Gareth Edwards, who is the director. Um, the pictures of him as a little kid. And, no, he's not. Well, he's like 30. Okay. It was oh, yeah. 30th, it was 30th birthday. birthday. Yeah. Going to Tunisia. And going to the original set um, and taking pictures and doing stuff and drinking the blue milk. Uh, and then they did... Uh, one for all of the major characters and the actors who played them, both on the Rebel side and on the Empire side, and going through the whole cast and how they kind of picked them and everything. Um, that was way awesome. Um, it was just nice to... You watch a lot of these and they're just blowing smoke up each other's ass. Oh, he's the best actor. You're the best actor I've ever seen. <laughs> and and it's like it's like you're never gonna talk to that person again. But you can really tell that these people cared about a being on a Star Wars movie, b wanting to do a good job, and c they actually cared about each other, right? Yeah, and how I I loved how all of them understood the weight of being in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. And how some of them even uh, petitioned o over and over and over again. Yeah, the guy who played um, Brody, whose name I cannot remember, got the part and was still sending in audition tapes to <laughs> Gareth Edwards. And it, the, line, the, fun, the best line in that whole thing was, I've got the director's email. I'm just going to keep sending him stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent him like 15 different versions of the character. It was just really funny. Um, and then they did um, a, uh, a segment on the practical effects, um, how they tried to uh, go back and take pictures and drawings and everything and make it as close as they could because they wanted Rogue One to end right as New Hope begins. And to have the same feeling, but not 
so you you saw it felt the same, but it wasn't yeah. exactly the same yeah. because then that's boring. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Gareth, one of the things that Gareth Gareth Edwards said that I really appreciated was um, how you there's a line you have to stay on. And if you go too far right, you get too far away from Star Wars. And you go too far left, you're just remaking Star Wars. And that's so it's trying to you're trying to stay in that little area, uh, trying to be fresh, but still stay within the the confines of the universe and everything. And that was it was really nice to hear Gareth Edwards actually say that. Um, they did a really cool thing on the two actors who played. If you haven't seen Rogue One, you're watching the wrong show. But I'm gonna put this up anyways. Okay? All right. Uh, the two actors who played um, Grand Moth, Grand Moth Tark Tarkin and Princess Leia and how they went through the process of putting all the little dots in their faces and everything. And the guy who played Tarkin um, actually, um, like, they were showing him on set watching Tarkin in A New Hope and watching his body movements and is watching his... Um, um, his listening to his cadence and his voice and stuff like that and uh he, and the guy was not he's not a professional he's a professional actor but he's not a professional like in, uh, uh impersonator. impersonator or anything like yeah. that right so yeah. he looks like uh, a younger version of tarkin um but it was yeah it was that was really really cool mm -hmm. that, that that's the one i wanted to watch the most was that um and then the last piece um right at the very end uh, we were going to turn it off, and it's like it's got five minutes left. Why? How is there five minutes left? We've gone over everything. They did a five-minute thing on all the Easter eggs with Anne Rogue One. Well, not all. Well, okay, most the, of the the major ones. Most of the, the major. The internet has already spoiled. Yeah, and there were some <laughs> in there that I hadn't seen. Uh, yeah, there were a couple that I didn't know about, but most of them we we knew. The one that really got me with Gareth Gareth Edwards, the the director, is the guy who actually pulls the lever to release the ship, yeah. so they can get away from Vader. Um, I I he's running by the screen so fast you really don't see it. Yeah. And uh oh, the one I uh the thing, um, looks like a jellyfish, but it's a robot is behind them in the oh it's the droid from uh from empire empire yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same it's the same one yeah that was really cool too because it again it was in the background so if you weren't really paying attention you didn't get to see it right yeah. this is why you watch it 17 times maybe after we get done with the show um but i i love at good extra features um the one thing i really wish they would have done which will probably be on the special edition that comes out in six months uh the platinum edition or whatever they call it because it's Disney. Extended director's cut, blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't. I don't want a director's cut. I like the cut the way the movie is. I want to see the director's commentary oh, with Gareth Edwards. Yeah, I would love to see that. Uh, just his take on the whole process of everything and how they shot know. everything. I don't know if they've done that with any of the other Star Wars. Uh, JJ movies. did one with Force Awakens on did the Blu-ray edition that I wanted to buy, but it was like another forty bucks, and our Blu-ray player's not working right now, so. Um, but that's I I would I want to as many times as I'm going to watch this I actually want to hear it from the director's point of view again with Force Awakens I want to hear it from JJ's point of view and maybe Kathleen Kennedy and maybe and Pablo Hidalgo and like some of those who are part of the creative process and even John Knoll whose idea it was to do Rogue One I'd like to maybe see that kind of that storytelling process through their eyes and stuff I just I I like that stuff so uh, but definitely worth the buy. Um, if you, uh, get it on, you know, on in demand, just do it. Just, you have it forever until your PS4 takes a shit, which is ours is doing. Um, but definitely worth the buy. Definitely, definitely spend the money. You still have it forever. It's in the cloud. It's, oh, it is in the, the cloud. The cloud is forever. Do you remember our password? Yes. Okay, good. All right. At least one of us know what the password is. <laughs> you can't die on me. It's my... <laughs> 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 she's got the passwords to everything uh, I can't watch Rogue One because she's my, my wife passed away uh, we finished um, before we got Rogue One uh, we finished Iron Fist finally um, we talked about it last week we are about halfway through and then uh, and so we got through it uh, it's okay it's okay it's it's not as it my reference point is 
it's like the Thor movies for me in the in the Marvel movie universe in the cinema in the MCU. The Thor movies are good, but they're probably the lowest ranked of all the Marvel stuff for me. Iron Fist is good. It's just good. And we've been amazed with Daredevil and Jessica Jones. And we were pretty happy with Luke Cage. We were pretty happy with... I was happy. I, I liked Luke Cage. It was about three episodes too long. Yeah. But, uh, Jessica Jones is my favorite. And then Daredevil. And then Luke Cage. And then Iron Fist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, season two of Daredevil is pretty much almost a perfect season. I think there's one and a half episodes in there. They're probably a little bit too much. But other than that, with just the Punisher timeline and the and the Electra stuff and yeah. everything that happens in that season. Yeah. Um, but Iron Fist, um, if you're just watching a show to watch a show, you're probably not going to really like it. Um, it. It's it's a little slow starting. It's a very slow burn. It's a corporate drama more than it is a kung fu show, which I think is why a lot of people were really upset about it because they wanted it to be a kung fu show, and it's not a kung fu show. It's it's a corporate drama. Although the way... Okay, no spoilers here, but the way they ended it kind of feels like the next season could be more about where he came from, which would be more... Kung Fu y. Yeah. If that's a word. Yeah, I I I I can I can agree with that. I I think that they may not get a chance to do another one. Uh, I don't know. Unless it's in the plans already, but I I just don't well, know. Well they left it. I mean it's Yeah. It, yeah. It, they it, left and they let they left it for Iron Fist. They didn't leave it for the Defenders. It's, I it's think so unless I mean, that's he, the premise of what the defenders are gonna go do. I but. hope not, because then it's just a Iron Fist show, and, yeah, and with it, everybody in it, right? And that's not what the defenders should be. The defenders should be the four of them getting <laughs> together, five if you count the Punisher, and have them go off and you know fight a new big bad, fight somebody. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm hoping King Ben. Uh, but uh, if you are into the to the Marvel TV stuff, watch all of it. If you are into uh, just watching a regular show, um, skip to episode six. <laughs> eh, five. Skip to five. Everything you missed in the first uh, four episodes, you can probably pick up on uh, throughout what's going on and, and just move forward from there. So that's my, my suggestion. Other than that, it gets a, eh, uh, you know, it's a thumbs, thumbs up, but eh, it's probably, again, it's probably about three episodes too long, so... Uh, that's, that's how it is. Um, we had two trailers drop in the last... 24 hours? Uh, Justice, Week, Justice League was on Saturday. So oh, okay. It was like... 48 hours. What we were told no math. Remember? Back to the whole... Okay. So the last three days, 48 hours, 72 hours, sometime in the last little bit, um, we've had two trailers drop. Uh, the first one was Justice League. What did you think? Do you remember? Uh, yes. We've had some alcohol since then. Uh, no, I don't drink <laughs> alcohol. Um, I I like the Avengers watching that Justice one. League trailer reaction. That was pretty funny. That one's better than the, I think the regular. That was definitely a fan um, thing, but it would be funny if Marvel would, would do that. Um, uh, you know, again, <laughs> it looked really good, but it's yeah. hard to get excited yeah. with with the you know dumpster fire that is that is dc and and um warner right now so uh, uh, yeah that was the thing about bvs batman versus superman was the trailers looked amazing and then the movie came out and, and the the theatrical version came out yeah. and everybody was all like oh. but then you watch the director's cut the way it was supposed to be put out and it made a lot more sense it's, it's uh, better it's um I, I, I took this as an introduction to what the team was going to be. I still don't know who the big bad is. I still don't know what those flying things are. Although I have an idea that they're with Doomsday, and I know Stephen Wolf's in it. And I, I, I know that stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, for just watching the trailer, yeah, you didn't get any. You didn't. All you information. got. All you got was them coming together. Yeah, which is perfect. I think that's just perfect. That's just. The, the story is about these five. 
and that's it. Yeah. That, that's 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 all. Here's the introduction to all the badass badassery that's going to be happening. And I'm sorry, Momoa is stealing the show. He's going to steal the movie. It's just going to happen. Everybody's going to swoon if they're not already. And he's just it, he's just going to steal the show. Uh, I I love when he. Uh... When he steps off the, I don't know what it was. He steps off and he goes. He goes to, to Batman. He's like, doing the bat thing. I like it. And he walks away. <laughs> Batman's all. Rrr. I see her. I see her playing well with others. Uh, we'll see how long that takes. Uh, uh, J.K. Simmons has to go shirtless at least one scene after the whole freaking pumping. Come on. Yeah, that's true. Gordon, he's Gordon, spent a lot of time on he's his gotta, body. Like, he's got to do the whole, you know, uh, James Tiberius Kirk and lose his shirt at some point in some <laughs> fight and have this... Uh, but I like the trailer. I did a full reaction. Uh, it's on the YouTube channel. Uh, I, I want to give away too much from what I said there, but it's... I liked it, and I'm hesitant. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much what it is. Um, the other trailer that came out just came out this morning... I did a trailer reaction uh, this afternoon after I got home from work and took a nap. Um, it was the Spider-Man Homecoming. That's uh, the the second trailer, the the much more of the story trailer. What's going to happen? Uh, what did you think of that one so far? Um, you know, it was only a little. It was just a little more than the first one. You saw a lot of the same stuff as the first one. Just and there was some there just was some, a little yeah some extras. I kind of get the feeling that Aunt May knows that he's Spider-Man now. Yeah, uh, like the way of the world line, uh, like he's carrying the weight of the world. Yeah, you, like yeah, yeah, you need to yeah. stop ca- carrying the weight of the world or whatever. So it kind of gave you the impression that she knows now, um, and uh, you know, I you know I don't think it's gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be great. It's not gonna be like maybe in the top three um, Marvel movies um, because this is actually the first. Spider-Man movie being brought into this, yeah, into the MCU, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we got introduced to him um, in the last Avengers movie, but um, was that Avengers? No, that was, was Captain Civil, Am- Civil War. Cap- yeah, Captain America movie. <laughs> it was kind of an Avengers movie. Yeah, they were all in it. it. They yeah. just called it Captain America Civil War. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this is his first standalone. So, um, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot more character building and kind of. Learning who he is. I, the 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 two things I took from it was, um, I, I said in my review, I posted it and go watch it. Um, uh, uh, there was comp- I didn't watch it until I did the review, so it was an instant reaction to it. Uh, but I did watch some stuff today, just through watching Collider. They talked about it on Movie Talk and stuff, and they were saying that there was too much Tony Stark in it uh, and Iron Man in it, and and I took it when I watched the trailer that. The first half of the trailer is kind of how Tony's trying to be the mentor and it's not working the way he wants it to, so he takes the suit back and now Peter has to figure out how to be Spider-Man. And that's what the whole second half of the trailer is. And then the third half of the trailer, or the third half, uh, one, <laughs> one, two, three, apps. Um, the the third third part of the trailer is how Vulture is, is trying to go after Tony, but Peter is trying to to stop them before something happens. That's how I took it. Not everybody took it that way, but um, Vulture looks awesome. Let's talk about Michael Keaton being in this movie as a winged bad guy. Is this weird? Is this is this weird that well, Michael Keaton, Batman... Okay. He was Batman, now... and then he was Birdman in the freaking yeah, well, Chronicles yeah. of Birdman or whatever <laughs> as an actor, who, a washed-up actor who played a superhero, and now he's playing a bad... I'm so confused. Maybe it's in his contract. Maybe <laughs> I have to have wings. Is he going to be? Um, what was the thing from um, from Flash that was played by the girl? girl that no, no, the... the big Falcon guy. Was that Flash? It might have been Conan. Never mind. I was told there was no math. Um, <laughs> I really liked the trailer. Uh, the first one was very John Hughes high school kind of feel. This is very much more actiony. Here's what's going to happen. Here's kind of the storyline kind of thing. Um, so uh, that, you know, that kind of gets my, piques my interest quite a bit. Um, I'm holding out judgment of where this is going to land within my MCU provenance. Because uh, this is not necessarily a standalone Marvel movie. 
because Mar Marvel and Sony teamed up to do this. Sony still owns the rights to Spider-Man. And they're teaming up with Marvel to put Marvel in the MCU, to put Spider-Man Spider in the MCU. So I'm really kind of nervous that Sony's going to come in and, and, and say, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, that, 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 that's my only hesitation at this point in time. I trust that Marvel will do it right. I don't trust Sony not to fuck with it. So I don't know how much leeway Marvel's gonna give them, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, on some to, to some TV stuff, there you know we're trying. Like I said, we talked about Iron Fist. We got caught up, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're waiting to finish. Legion, Taboo, Arrow, Flash, Legend of Tomorrow. We, we're waiting for them all to finish, and we're gonna sit down and binge them all at one time when we're actually home. If, if movies would stop coming out. If like movies would come out. Like, Fantastic Beasts and uh, Doctor Strange. and Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Can't watch them just once. You can watch them multiple times. Because well, you, you got to catch all the stuff in the background. Hence the freaking thing from... Anyways. Um, so, what, a really big news piece came out today. Um, Katie Cassidy, who played who played Laurel Lance on Arrow. Um, uh, if you haven't heard of this by now... It's... who was ceremoniously dismissed last year. No, she wasn't dismissed. They killed her off last year. <laughs> they killed Laurel Lance off, like, out of the blue. It's like, she's talking, and then they kill her off, like, out of the blue. Um, so she, she was in a hospital bed. It wasn't like she just dropped dead just in mid-sentence. She, <laughs> she got shot. She was in the hospital bed. She was getting better. She was talking to Oliver. And then all of a sudden she had a heart attack on the table and died. And never, they never explained what either, A, what was what was what what she said to Oliver ever, or B, why she just all of a sudden dies. They never really explained that, which is fine. It's the Arrowverse. Um, thanks, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Um, so sh Katie Cassidy uh, actually signed a contract to show up on all the other shows. So she has a contract to show up on Arrow and on Flash and on Legends. Um, I haven't seen if she's going to be on Supergirl, but that's like Earth-38, so it's really hard to kind of throw her in there. Um, but the, the news came out today that she's actually going to be a regular again next year on Arrow. And she's going to be Black Siren, um, which is uh, the evil version of the Black Canary on Earth-2. Um, and so they've already kind of they already kind of teased it a little bit this season. Um, uh, they they had her in one episode, and then she very easily got caught. I wonder if that was just a setup episode or not. Um, uh, but you know, it's the Arrowverse, it's the CW verse. They are all about redemption stories, which would make a whole lot of sense for next year. Um, I, I really like, I really liked her as Laurel Lance, so I was really upset when they killed her off. Yeah, but I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, because there's the whole, you know. Um, a connection between her and Oliver, right? And and I think right. I think maybe after she died, and then they had that the the four part sort of Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, three Legends, and a, three and a bit three, crossover, yeah, <laughs> three and an ending crossover. Um, you know that I mean everybody was like, oh my god, I cried through that whole episode, and and when Oliver left her again, again. and <laughs> he had and to say goodbye again <laughs> I, I just wonder if they were like oh maybe maybe we shouldn't have gotten rid of that storyline the, the thing that i really like about cw uh, and this dc stuff that they're doing is that they love their characters and they love the actors who are playing these characters more they brought john borman back after they killed him off after the first season they brought back. They're bringing back Laurel Lance. They are bringing back um, Captain Freeze. Um, uh, Wentworth Miller, who plays Captain Freeze, who got killed off, so he could do Prison Break, and now he's going to come back. He has. Uh, he has. He was the first one to ever sign a multi-show contract. So he's actually on. He's actually supposed to show up on all the other shows as a regular, not even like a like a bit part whatever occasionally like a regular guy and john borman signed the same thing and katie cassidy signed the same thing and so they're they're willing to have these people 
be part of their universe. Well, and they can. It's all timey wimey, and it's all yeah. multiple universes, yeah. and so thanks, Barry. <laughs> thanks, Barry. So you know, we don't have to. It's just because they're dead here doesn't mean they're right. They're dead five years ago or on earth two or or, or 38 or whatever 38 it is right or, so yeah. i just i just thought that it was cool they brought her back um her social media is awesome the stuff that, uh, and the stuff that she was posting with katie lutz uh who plays her sister sarah lance on on the, in the arrowverse from Sh- chicago this weekend was just the two of them get into so much trouble. oh my god they're, they're <laughs> they are really sisters yeah um so Looking forward to that. We'll watch Arrow here once it gets done here in a couple more weeks. All right. So last piece, 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 piece. Um, Phoenix Comic Con had another guest, special guest announcement um, today. It's Curtis Armstrong. Um, Curtis Armstrong, you say? Who is that? Um, it's <laughs> Curtis Armstrong. Who's that? Who's that? Um, it's uh, Burger from uh, uh, Revenge of the Nerds. And he's also been on Supernatural a bunch lately. Uh, and he's done a ton. Huh? He is Booger on Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. I remember him from Moonlighting. When a you moon said lighting, Moonlighting, yeah, I was like, oh moon yeah, lighting. he's the kind of dorky. So in the announcement, I, I'm not I'm not busting on Phoenix Comic Con at all here, at all. I don't know who wrote it up. But their description of, you, you know, he was Booger on, Booger on Revenge of the Nerds. Okay. You've also seen him on Lewis and Clark and Supernatural and Moonlighting, Moonlighting. and Dodgeball with Alan Tudyk. And I'm... I, we love dodgeball, okay? Come on. Uh, and we stood here and stared at each other for a good five minutes. Who was he in dodgeball? He has a bit for like two minutes as the freaking dodgeball tournament and Grammar Jamboree announcing the thing that he's in it for two minutes. If if that. If if two minutes. Really? I mean, that's a, I mean, I get a lot of the other ones, but that that's not one. Uh, it's cool that he's coming because... I. I went and looked it up because I didn't think he does a whole lot of the con circuit. Um, the circuit as I go into all the cons. He does go do the cons. Um, he shows up in New York a lot because he lives in New York. So it's easy for him to do that. He was at uh, Fan Fest in Salt Lake this year. So that was kind of a cool thing. It's cool because that's not something you normally get to see. And that could either be really cool because you get to hear a bunch of stories you've never heard before. Or it could suck because they don't know how to handle it. Alan Hank. Alan. Or, uh, Al- Allison Hannigan and oh and, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I'm sorry we, uh, uh, we, I love the both of you but you did a horrible they horrible were, panel yeah uh, Alexi De- 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 that's not Deveros that's something different um, <laughs> uh, Wesley from Angel and Willow from Buffy Buffy Al- Allison Hannigan's been on it they were two years ago at Comic Con the room was packed they were standing in the back of the room and they were not very good no they and, didn't really tell any stories they didn't like yeah. people would ask questions and they'd answer them very quickly and you're like oh this is horrible yeah yeah and we missed it because uh katie sackoff was on before them and really did, we at that point in time we really didn't know katie very well and then we started following her on social media after her panel and she watches it on lawnmower long long more long long more Longmire. 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 And, uh, and then Battlestar Galactica and like all this other stuff. And, uh, and sh- that's the panel we should have gone to. Whatever. Um, and the other announcement they made um, was a couple days ago. And this one, I think, shows that they are actually starting to figure things out. Uh, they announced that they have made arrangements, arrangements, <laughs> um, to, with parking structures in the area where you can pre-buy a parking spot around the convention center. And then that way you're not paying 50 bucks a day uh, or not being able to find one at all. You have a prepaid spot, you just go to that spot, and that's your number, you're on this floor, you're in this parking structure. Now I didn't see if they have a shuttle back and forth from the different locations. They're pretty much in walk. I would assume so. I would assume so. I mean, the one, the one farthest one was, um, uh, oh, on the other side of Culinary Dropout from the convention center. So that's yeah. a, it's a good 10 minute walk. Not it's a, bad. It's but a little warm in the heat. A little warm in the heat. And if you're in cosplay, it's a long walk. Um, not that you're walk, not walking all day. But um, but I just think it's a really good sign that they actually are trying to take care of their fans um, with them. Here's your prepaid spot. You know you have a spot. 
you're not paying 50 bucks a day. You can do a four day passes or you can do each individual day. So if you just bought a pass for a Friday and you can buy a parking pass for Friday and it's like 10 bucks or whatever, you can go look it up on the, on the, on the uh, Phoenix Comic Con website and, and they have all the links and everything in there available. Uh, I don't want to say officially what the what the prices are because the only one I saw was thirty three bucks for four days, so that's and they might be priced differently depending on how close to the convention center right, they are. Right. I'm wondering though if that's in response to you know we stayed at the Sheridan, plug, give us free room. Or yeah, something. yeah, come um, on. <laughs> uh, and we got in on Friday. It's friends of ours who got in on Thursday um, couldn't even park in the Sheridan parking. Yeah. They had to go park across the street in the, um, uh, whatever that is, that, that area where the... Uh, the Arizona Center. The Arizona Center. That's they had to where go, I ended up. And that's where we ended up parking. But, I mean, we were there on Friday, but even on Thursday, folks were having to park all the way over there and yeah. then huff their um, luggage over. And it's like, you know, I, I mean, Seattle, okay, maybe I get that I can't park where I I paid 100 bucks a night to stay, but in Phoenix, I should yeah. be able to park at the hotel that I paid a lot of money to stay at. Yeah, we, by the time I got, we got there probably 9.30 or 10 on Friday last year. I was on the seventh of eight levels at the Arizona Center. It was a good 15 minute walk back to the hotel from where I was at. Yep, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I expect to be able to park where yeah, I, yeah. I want to hotel. So, but it's it's actually a good sign that they're actually trying to work it out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're getting closer and closer. Uh, they said they still have some more announcements of stuff to happen. And I keep banging the drum for Twisted Tunes. Twisted Tunes. There's 15. Right now, there's 10 or 12, maybe 15. I want to say 15, but I know there's at least 10. Like, proper voice actors coming to Phoenix Comic Con, including Alan Tudyk, who voice acts everything i mean he's in everything right and there's you know all kinds of people who are going to be there this year and twisted tunes has been uh, uh, every once in a while i just put it on in the background on youtube and we watch it, we watch it. and it's and just giggle. and it's so much fun i you know who they need milo ventimiglia oh <laughs> that would be awesome they could reenact the scene from uh con men, from con men. uh uh well, the, I post, I, I sent a tweet out to Phoenix Comic Con. It says, at Phoenix Comic Con, uh, since the 40th anniversary of Star Wars A New Hope is the 25th of May, which is Thursday of the con, we need to A, do a, a, a showing. It has to figure out, somebody has to figure out a showing. And B, they need to have Twisted Tunes come in and do a reading um, uh, of Rogue One. If you don't know what Twisted Tunes are, go look at look, uh, Twisted Tunes with a Z uh, and look them up. And they have voice actors and they take scenes from movies and they they give each of the voice actors a different voice to do during the scene. So like Darth Vader is played like by uh, 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 Popeye's girlfriend, Olive oh, Oil, well. is played by, you know, so they have somebody doing olive oil's voice as darth vader <laughs> and so the it's just completely random really weird stuff so it would just be cool to be you know to do a big star wars kind of thing it's the 20 it's the 40th anniversary anyways uh so what do you guys think are you excited about the new justice league and spider-man movies um are you ready for comic-con we're not ready for comic-con i'm uh, ready i'm ready I'm to ready. go to comic con i'm not ready and yeah. buy the rogue one dvd it's definitely worth the extras let us know like this video share it with your friends leave us a comment you can also find us um uh, on facebook at pop culture cult please subscribe to the youtube cha channel and please like the you the the facebook channel page page um we're also on instagram we post on there all the time uh at we're at pop culture cult one um and please follow us on twitter we're at pop underscore cult one uh and, and we tweet all the time there too uh the big two please subscribe to the youtube channel we're trying to get to 100 subscribers by uh by memorial day weekend uh and we're still trying to we're always 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 looking for new friends on facebook to share uh and so if, tell us what you think and until next time i gotta find the mouse good night now
I promise you, when this is over, you can cry all you want, and I won't say a word.